Lazarus his evil things. Amen. But now he is comforted and thou art tormented. And beside all this between us and you, there is a great gulf fix. So now at this point is a great gulf fix. Remember? Remember when Christ rose, okay? Remember the earth shook. There was an earthquake or when Jesus got on the cross because then the veil was rent in two. There, the God then, the, 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 all those who have been waiting in that place, Abraham, Moses, all of them through the ages rose up. There's now was a separation from it. Christ went to, folks, he went to, the Bible talks about, I've preached this before, he took the, the keys of death, hell, and the grave. It's right there in the scripture. He went to preach the souls that are in prison. He conquered hell, took it all. Amen? And created the separation to where now, where, you know, like where my mother's at, you know, and, and your mother and your, the people that you know who have truly died in Christ are there in that sixth dimension. They don't see the fifth dimension. They're separated because Jesus Christ, the blood of Christ, did it for you and me. He said, it, he had his hands, he's on the cross. He took his last breath, it is finished. He drops his head, the spirit leaves him, the, the earth shakes, they raise from the dead. Oh, praise God. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Now, then he said, I pray thee, therefore, Father, that thou wouldst send, me, send him to my father's house. He said, I got five brothers. Tell them. Please send somebody to warn them. That they may testify them, lest they also come to this place of torment. Folks, hell is real. It's a real thing. Now, Abraham said unto them, him, huh, you know what? They got Moses. They got the prophets. What could they say today? They got the word. And they got you. Stay with me. I'm getting to something. Now, let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one, if one went from the dead, he said the rich and Lord, oh, yea, nay, nay, Father Abraham. If one, if, if one came back from the dead from hell and went and told them, right, they would repent. He says unto them, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded. Amen? Though one, though rose, though one rose from the dead, Amen? Hold on here. Now, folks, he says right here, it doesn't matter. Your, your witness, you keep witnessing to people. Keep telling them about the true word of God. You tell them what the word says. You preach the word to them at work, to your children, to people. You're at the grocery store. Just start, You get a chance to talk about it, folks. Take those opportunities, those moments, and keep getting the word out to the people. Amen? Because if, and if they don't receive that, folks, I don't. it doesn't matter what you do. You know, I want to share this because it's, I, it's supernatural to me. And it's a testimony of my brother. He works at an a, 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 a engine plant, and he's been witnessing to people. And I'm going to do a short version of this. I'll do it just as best I can. But he's been witnessing to people at work, witnessing, 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 witnessing these people. And when the, when the mask mandates kind of lifted in my state and things started getting back to whatever, people back eating their porridge, you know, like we talked about earlier, dipping in like, just like Esau, living for the world, oh, we're, whatever, you're, they start persecuting my brother. Persecution, persecution, persecution. Like any man of God, because I trust me, I've been going through it myself, you get discouraged, you get down, you begin to question, Lord, am I doing what's right? You know, I go through it, trust me. Am I saying the right thing? Lord, I need something from you. And God did some things for my brother. I won't go into all the details. Some supernatural things through, through dreams and, and, and his wife and just some beautiful things and just, just woke him back up to remind him. But what he did more than just that is he's been talk, talk, talking about the mark of the beast, okay? That it's coming, you know? And, and he understands, he knows it, and we, it's already been taking place in the sense of spiritually, there's only two marks, the Holy Ghost, and, and, and if you don't have the Holy Ghost, then it's religion, Religion is a mark of the beast, folks. It started from the book of Genesis, and it's run right to the very end. I preach that enough. I ain't going to that. Now, but he's at work, and he has to put on these plastic gloves, you know, like medical gloves, because you work with engines and oil. And then you put on a cloth glove. And I've seen this before. I, I worked at F&P for, for one day, and <laughs> so I, I, get, I, I could visualize what he was saying. And I used to work at Centaurs, and we had, to, we had to clean gloves. And I remember seeing gloves kind of like what he was talking about. 
So he's putting on a cloth glove over top of a, like a medical glove. And they bring by these new gloves. Brand new gloves, you stick them on and you go to work. And he's been battling at work. The persecution, people making fun of him. And all of a sudden, it's break time. He takes off his cloth glove. and supernaturally written on his hand. Oh, my phone's turned off. I'd show you the picture. I'll send it to any of my subscribers who talk to me. I'll send it to you. It's written 666 on the right hand. Yes. And he shows the people... And, and from that, it, it, it re-energized his platform to keep witnessing the people, to keep proclaiming the message. But folks, it, it, there comes a point. We just keep speaking the word. All we can do, they're either going to receive it or not. It doesn't matter what. I mean, he says right here, uh, one could raise from the dead. And, and, Ab and Abraham's telling him, that they, they still were rejected. If they don't receive your message you're bringing, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. They could, God can raise it for the dead and, and, and say it's true. They'll still reject it. But keep preaching it to them. Because I want to show you something. Why we do it now. So now we got the word flame uh, in this scripture, which is. Okay, let's just read. The Greek word flame um, is used in numerous verses, okay? Now, hold on here. I want to read this because this is how it's tied and it started hitting me earlier. I didn't highlight it. Okay. Oh, there it is. I am tormented in this flame. Now, hold on that for a minute. Think about this. They're in hell. They're being tormented by a flame. Your mind right away thinks of fire, right? And we're going to show you that more in a minute where that takes place later on in what's called the second death. Okay, but this flame, I catch this and watch this now. The Greek word is number 5395, and it's used numer in numerous verses of what this torment is. Now, they will continually, think about this now, this is what I want to show you. They will continually be tormented night and day with the truth. That's the flame. That's the torment. Your message, brother, your witness at work, witness it to your family, your children, your church, your gym, wherever it goes. If they don't receive it, that's the flame. That's the torment. It's a constant over day and night, just your, your voice constantly tormented, tormented, tormented over and over and over and they can't repent. Remember Esau sought a place of repentance and could not find it, even seeking it with tears. They'll be crying. They'll be saying, oh God, and there's no God there. He's still here right now. There's still a chance for you to repent, but then there's not. You can't repent. You, 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 you'll hear that same message. That, that you, my, my ministry, the things I preach, will be played in so many people's ears a day of judgment. Over and over, those people who rejected, not just a day of judgment, right there as, a, as, a, as, a, as they go to hell, as they end their life, right there in hell, in that place waiting, it's a continual, it doesn't stop. Your witness, that, that very word, and they want, they, they want to get up and repent, but they got no place. What a place of torment, folks. They'll realize that they missed it. They were, I, you were right that they're wrong, but there's nothing for them. It's a continual repent, uh, seeking repentance by being tormented by the truth. It doesn't stop. Over and over, over and over, knowing that they rejected it. That flame. Hebrews 2 Thessalonians 1 verse 8. In flaming fire. That same Okay, hold on. And flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and th that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord. They're separated. They're, 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 the only reason why there's peace right now on this earth is because we're still here. Once we go, it's, uh, it's done. There's nobody getting saved in the tribulation period, folks. Total, it's death. It's like hell right here upon earth. Satan becomes totally incarnate in the beast. The church, 
the image. Now, everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of His power. Hebrews 1.7, the same word flame. Now think about this. This is what hit me too. Folks, we are, we are God's angels. We are His messengers. We speak the word. Amen. He 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 puts he's put anointing obviously on my life. I'm an, I'm a, I I there's a flame of fire up on my life and it's an anointing. But that same word flame that he's being tormented by, do you get it? Listen to this. He's being tormented by a flame. <laughs> I tell you sometimes you know when I'm preaching, I'm like, you know, I'm over here tormenting you religious demons. Because that's what I'm doing, folks. It's the word of God. It's tormenting hell right on earth. Souls that are in prison walking around right now. You're going to work with them. You're going to, they're, they're part of your church. They're all, all over the church. And God puts a true anointed man who's got the Holy Ghost, who's, who's not rejected the birthright, who's got the Holy Spirit, and he brings the word of God. He brings a flame. It's that flame that torments them day and night. It's the word of God coming forth from his bride. Amen. You, the elect. You're God's voice. He'll judge the earth by the word. And you speak with the bride. The spirit of the bride say, come with Christ the word. You'll be used of God and you are that flame. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Now, Hebrews 1, 7, And the angel he saith, who maketh his angels spirits and his ministers a flame. The same Greek word used in the tormenting flame for the rich young ruler <laughs> he's got you tormenting him. <laughs> I'm going to keep on preaching. Folks, if you ain't getting persecuted, you ain't doing the right thing. You ain't, if, you ain't, if you ain't getting attacked and persecuted, you're doing something wrong. Amen? You keep preaching the word. And, if they, and my YouTube channel has dropped off drastically, the views, because they, they ran, I just torment them right away from me. It's gotten quiet lately. So I'm like, Lord, what do I need to do next? And I had a thought today. I think I might start going to the community of faith. <laughs> I might start visiting their... I might sit in the back and just make Pastor Justice just squirm in his seat. Make that religious demon squirm in his seat. Trust me, if God tells me to do it, I'll be there, I'll be there on Sunday. I will sit there in the back. I will, I will quietly sit there. But that presence of God will walk in there with me and it'll begin to torment every religious demon of hell within that church, amen? It'll start to shake it up. Whatever God tells me to do, I'll do it, amen? But I thought it crossed my mind today. Amen. I wish I could make a YouTube video of that too for you guys. I would. <laughs> we'll, we will see. Because, but I'll tell you what, folks. I got, I, got a, I got a platform at my gym. I got people that call themselves Christians and they're about to get this message. It goes out now. Now I felt it. It will go out. Today's Sunday night almost. Time. I don't know what time it is. Time to get done. I want to sit down and wake people up, but it, it will go out after this message. I'm going, I'm going forth now. Satan, I know you'll try to fight me on it, but I rebuke you in Jesus Christ's name. It's going out. Amen. I can care less. Amen. we got to expose it. Keep doing it, folks. You, you, you are that flame. That's what brings the torment. It's the voice of God that just comes through your life. Amen. But those who receive it, receive eternal life. Don't reject the birthright. And then your very life your testimony is a part of that very flame. Because you, because your example, how you lived, the, 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 the things you said to them, the word you preached to them, the things you, you told them, are what torments them in hell. Amen. Now, Revelation 1.14, And his head and his hairs were like wool and white as snow, and his eyes were like the flame. It's that same word, flame. Amen. He's hit. Folks, the Bible says the word of God is like a sharp, living, two-edged sword. It discerns to the thoughts and tents of the heart, going down to sunder and, and, and top of my, you know. No, I'm just going to read it. I'm going to read it. Hebrews, oh, oh, wow, man, look how close that was. Praise the Lord. Hebrews 4, verse 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword. His eyes are like a flame. It cuts. Amen. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. It discerns and it goes right through you, folks. His eyes are a flame of fire. It's the word of God that, that judges and goes right to the soul of that person. Amen. 
And either they get it right now or they, or they go lost and they go straight to hell. And that very same word that you bring forth is that flame that judges them. Amen. That they're tormented day and night. Hallelujah. Keep tormenting them, brother. Keep tormenting them, sister. Don't stop. Amen. Because eventually you're going to find an elect. Amen. Eventually, that's the ultimate goal, is that God will use us to find that one. That'll come out of it. That'll hear the voice of her beloved. Amen. And lead that, that dead church that you're a part of. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now. Whew. Revelation 2.18. And to the angel of the church of Thyatira write, These things saith the Son of God, who hath his eyes like unto a flame, the same word flame, a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. Revelation 19.12. His, his, his eyes were as a flame of fire. Oh, brother, sister. You know what I'm talking When the eyes of the word looks right straight in your soul, whew, you are nothing before it. You either you you will be like Esau. <laughs> ah, that's okay. I'm just you turn and you stop listening to it, and you go run for that porridge. You go run for the cares and the things of this life, and you reject it. And you will never find a place of repentance. It says, ever. You reject it. Amen. It's death. And then he gets quiet. He don't deal with you no more. Now. Because I'm done. He knows exactly what I'm talking about. He'll lead me to somebody else. He'll show me what I got to do. And uh, I've been talking to, to, I was texting my family the other night, even talking to Brother Chris about it. Brother Chris has a, a tent. And uh, I would like to try, I'm going to reach out to the, to the village city manager this week. And there's a park in town and see if I can plan something in September, maybe towards the end, and have tent meeting, a tent meetings. And give me time to, to invite, put it out in the newspaper, get it on social media the best I can, and just preach the gospel. And I told Brother Chris, if we do it, you're preaching too. <laughs> so get your, sword, get your sword ready. So be praying for us about that. I throw it out to those on my channel. Uh, pray for us, the Lord, if it's His will, this, this will come about. Amen. Now, Isaiah 66 and 24, And they shall go forth and look upon the carcass of the men that have transgressed against me, for their worm shall not die. Folks, again, I talk about the very beginning of this message. The way Brother Man taught it, I don't see it that way. I can't, I can't go, I, where, I, where I had to shut down for a couple days, it's like, I can't go behind this camera and preach for my Lord Jesus Christ and preach this word and, and take it the way, he was, the way he was trying to explain it. I can't, couldn't do it. I couldn't make it run to the word of God. So I had to, to, to labor. It was a struggle for a couple of days. But I'm going to bring you the word. To bring you what the word says, okay? Now, it says here, their worm shall not die. Neither shall thy fire be quenched, and they shall be in a boring unto all flesh. Their worm. We talk about the skin worms. When a person dies, how the skin worm begins to eat their body. This is going down to their worm shall not die. As I just said, you know, you will basically, the person will be in hell. And all of a sudden they'll hear maybe my message. Maybe somebody come across this channel at one point and they'll hear of something I preached and all of a sudden it's, it's being played. And they hear it. They hear it. And all of a sudden they, they get to rise up like, oh, okay, Paul, I'm going to repent. And they right back. It just The door gets shut right in their face. There's no spirit of God. There's no place to repent. Constantly, their worm doesn't die. It's a continual just, I wish I would have listened. I wish I would have took what you said, Paul. I wish I would have took the warnings. But they try to find repentance and it's smacked right in their face. There's nothing. There's no place. There's no God. There's, no, there's nothing there but torment. Their word doesn't die. Continually. Amen. It doesn't stop. Mark 9, 42. And whosoever shall offend one of these little ones that believe in me, it is better for him that a millstone were hanging about his neck. Amen? 
he was cast into the sea. And if I, I and if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter this life maim, having two hands to go into hell into into the fire that will ne that shall never that shall never be quenched. Never be quenched. It doesn't end, folks. It's never a quenched fire. It's a continual torment, folks. Now. And if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into a halt, to enter into, enter into, enter halt into life, than to having two feet to be cast into hell, into the fire that shall never be quenched, where the worm dieth not. Now the word dieth. This is how I begin to break. I'm going to break this down here. The word dieth means to finish life. Expire, be dead, deceased, die. I'm sorry, yes. So when you got the TH, it's a continual. It's a continual. It's a continual. It dieth not. Not. So this here, here says it dieth, then it adds the word not. So to die is to die. It's, it's, it says here uh, to finish life, to expire, to be dead, but it died not. That word, it, it, it's just a continual, it doesn't stop. The reality, the, the reality of hell, brothers and sisters, to continue to, to try to cry out to people to realize and how many per people in the church are lost and going straight to hell. And they say, oh, I got the Holy Ghost on me. You can have the Holy Ghost, let me tell you something. You can have the Holy Ghost on you seven days a week and still be lost and go straight to hell. If you don't got it on the inside, if you have not partaken and died yourself and go to the cross and take on his word, amen, and completely let him come on the inside of your soul, you are lost. Amen. Just because you feel it doesn't mean you're right. Amen. You got to have it on the inside. The word not means never. Never. Dieth not. Never. Never. It just continues. Torment. 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 So we try to, I, I, you know, uh, preaching over the past year, I've had some, some of them religious demons I've tormented through this channel. And they, they could just, I ain't going to listen to the guy no more. We'll, we'll go back to my watered down, washed up church that I go to here in town and all over the world, all across this country and all over this world. But there... You can't run from it. I'll be, you'll be hearing me preach that preach to you 24 hours a day. Your witness will be to that guy at work. They'll be hearing your witness 24 hours a day. It dieth not. Continual torment. And they try to get, they try to, oh, but, but, oh, brother, can I, God forgive. Nope. No replace of repentance. They can't even get saved. They're done. Ta constant torment of the reality. That they, were, that they were given a free opportunity to hear the true word of God, to hear the message of God, to come unto Christ the full word, to flee this, the system of the church, and to run to Christ the word and make sure they got the, they got the Holy Ghost, which is the only, it's the only form of eternal life. You have to have the Holy Ghost to go to heaven. He's, 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 he's the, that's it. You gotta be filled with the Holy Spirit. You gotta have Christ on the inside. You must be born again, he says. He told Nicodemus that. And Nicodemus was religious, folks. You have to be born again of the Word of God. Amen. But they'll be there. And they'll, and they'll and, and the torment will be that they rejected something so freely given to them. The free gift that our Lord Jesus Christ gave us. When he went to the cross and died for our sins. And not only did he die for your sins, but that you would, that there's more to the cross, folks, than just saying, oh, I, I, Jesus died on the cross for my sins. It's go, entering into that cross and dying to yourself and of your life and of your mind and of your will and your ambitions, everything at the altar of God and giving it all to him and asking him to fill you with the Holy Spirit. It, it birthed a new change in your soul, in your heart, in your mind. Amen. 
That's the elect. That's what she's got. Hallelujah. But the religious church member, oh, we sung some songs today. We got all we got all jiggly wiggly in church. We felt emotionalism. We talked about some. We talked about Jesus a little bit. We put our little YouTube channel message. We're, we're, it's time to fly. We made people feel good. We all we got all the likes you can think about. We got all the most beautiful comments in the world, folks. I got to channel out negative comments constantly on my channel. That tornado video I put out's got over eleven thousand views. I had tons of dislikes, negative attacks, and other things I put out before. I've had to discredit or, or block out, remove. You all know I've been attacked. That's, folks, when you're preaching the true word of God, when you're demonstrating who Jesus Christ is, and he lives, amen? He's a living God. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. That Jesus Christ, hallelujah, it shows up in his bride at the very end times, amen? It does the supernatural. Hallelujah. Praise God. That God that I serve, that I love, that I know. Hallelujah. There's going to be negativity. There's going to be persecution. If you're not, brother, you, there's something wrong with your ministry. Now, dieth not. John 3, 16. Now, because here's how I began to study this. I thought, Lord, Brother Adam said this. I get what he's saying. He said, I believe. He said, you know, he didn't really hammer away it maybe too heavy, but, you know, I believe this is how it is because... You know, only he says only one form of eternal life is God, and then you'd have to have an eternal God burning. You know, you can't be eternal, have eternal life, be in hell. And I get, I get what he's saying. I understand. I, I can reason with it, right? Malachi, where it says, "I'll leave, them, I'll leave them neither root nor branch." He says, "Life is in the root, so they'll finally be come to an end." I get it, but as I run it through the word, it didn't dovetail. So, he'll challenge you sometimes, son and daughter of God. To see who you're going to stay with. Your church? You know, you all know how much the ministry of Brother Man was meant to my life. But I, I've been through way too much. I've seen so much in this message. So much idolatry. I don't talk about as a lot of things I've gone through. I don't hit on the message as much. Because I don't have a lot of message people who follow this ministry. Uh, they, 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 they hold on to their, to their idol, you know. And I say that with with deep respect, because I, I, you know how I feel about the ministry of Brother Manum. But they 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 have held on to something. And it's a fear. It's a fear. It's a fear of being able to trust that the Holy Spirit can speak to them as an individual. That's not of God, brothers and sisters. That doesn't that doesn't line up with my Bible. And I've seen a lot of things in the message, like I told you, but God put me on a journey. And separated me from it and showed me from a very young age that that Bible, that word is absolute above everybody. So as I run into the scriptures, I, I don't see it the way he's trying to explain it. And it is what it is. But I'm staying with the word. Now, John 3 16. For God so loved the world, the most famous scripture ever been put forth, that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting. Now focus on the word everlasting. That word is used over and over in Scripture. The same original Greek, which is G165, which is perpetual, also used of past time or past and future as well. Eternal, forever, everlasting world began. The same Word everlasting is used in 2 Thessalonians 1 9, which I just read, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. Now think about that. It's that same exact word, everlasting. It's used to talking about that John 3 16. Let me go back to where I was at. That whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Theirs is an everlasting destruction because they are now forever, for all eternity, separated from the presence of the Lord. Amen? That's what it's talking about. Because I, 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 
if you preach it that way, folks, you could you could very well say, well, then hell's going to last for a couple months. Then it just comes to an end when it says everlasting destruction and their worm is not quenched. Their worm dieth not forever. Continu just a continual torment, folks. They don't have eternal life. They've, they, they by choice have separated themselves from God throughout eternity where their worm dieth not and there's an everlasting destruction from the, pres from the presence of the Lord where they are constantly being tormented, tormented because they rejected the true word of God that you brought to them, that some other preacher preached to them or somebody else, whatever they heard throughout their life. They're being tormented by that forever. Now, Matthew 25, 41. Then shall he say also to them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire. The same word again. Everlasting, the same word that's used when talking about receiving everlasting life through following Christ. Everlasting fire. Prepared for the devil and his angels. Amen? Now I saw, and folks, I'm just talking right now talking to those who follow the channel. But I saw a guy who follows the same message. And let me say something too. I want to make sure I clarify myself. You know, this week there was a guy, there's a YouTube channel of a guy who's trying to discredit Brother Man's ministry, trying to make him out as a false prophet. And I called that brother out and, and, and chastised him in the name of the Lord because Brother Man was God, is God's prophet. He fulfilled Malachi 4, 5, and 6, Revelation 10, 7, Luke 17, 30. But so was Moses. And Moses struck the rock twice, Right? So, so was, uh, you know, you could look at Jonah. Jonah ran from the Lord. He was disobeying God, and God, and finally, he, 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 he surrendered to God's will. We are men. We are, we are sinners saved by grace. And, and the true test of any true child of God is, will you stay with the word? Will you be sincere before God that, Lord, help me reveal your word to me? And any true child of God will, will, will begin to try to run this. Will begin to seek by the by the by the help of the Holy Spirit to run the Scriptures together. And as I ran them together, it didn't line up. So you so where do you stay with? You stay with the Word, brothers and sisters. Prepare for his devils and an angel. Well, this brother says, try to say, well, there you go. It's prepared. So I think it's prepared as a beginning and it has to have an end. Well, didn't Jesus say, I go, to, I go prepare a place for you that where I am where you may be also? So now you're trying to tell me that the very thing he prepared is going to come, it has a beginning and an end too? See, it doesn't, it doesn't line up. It's got to go back to the word right here. This, this word, it's above it all. In Jesus Christ's name, it's this word. Hallelujah. And these, these message preachers do the same thing. It's, it's, it's same as these non-denominational churches do. They, they denominate in their mind a doctrine and they don't run it back to the word of God. The God's God, modern day, hallelujah, last day, men of God, who are staying with that word, amen? Who are fearless for this word right here. Oh, praise God.